Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk to you about how you have to do the work. And this is something that in my career, uh, it for sure drives me bananas, if I'm being really flippin' honest. It drives me bananas when an entrepreneur comes to me and says, oh, I wanna do you know the minimal amount of work possible. And the reason why that drives me nuts is like, you're not really committed to your business and you're not really committed to what you're doing and you're not like a true believer in your business. And it drives me bananas because like, um, I forget who it was that I said, heard this from the other day, but they were talking about like Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week. And they were saying like how it's total BS because when Tim Ferriss was actually writing that book, he was spending like 80 or 90 hours a week writing that book. <laughs> and then once the book came out, he spent like 80 or 90 hours a week promoting the book. And so while it would be super nice for everyone to have a four hour work week, I want you to know that if you're an entrepreneur and you're a true flipping believer in your business, that having a four hour work week is probably not realistic. And if you're looking at me and saying, Jane, you know, it totally is because blah, blah, blah. Well, I would love to know what your secrets are because I've been doing this for almost 15 years and I am still not at a point where I can only work four hours a week. Um, I can work much less than I used to, um, but I'm still working roughly 40 hours a week. And so the reason why I say this is because I think people get caught in this um, the sexiness, the dream, the, you know, the you know, beauty of like running your own business, that it gives you all this freedom and all of this yada yada. And it is, it's true. Like I get to take Fridays and have to check in in the morning and the afternoon, but I, for the most part, take Fridays off and I don't do calls and I spend them with my kids. And that's like an added bonus of me owning my own business. And I pick my son up from school every day and I drop him off from school every day. Um, but I think the thing is when, you, when you're building a business, right, and you're really trying to scale a business and you're trying to grow it and you're outsourcing, say, the growing part, right, like the work part, um, where you're trying to figure out the strategy to grow and the we to grow and yada, yada, it's like you're almost saying, like, I'm not truly believing in my business. Like... I'm going to outsource my most important part of my business to someone who isn't as committed to it as I am. Like, think about that for a second. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's something that drives me nuts because I am a, if you look at the strength finder, I am a strategic achiever, competition, activator, communicator, which basically means I love like starting doing, making stuff happen. Um, and I'm really not great at the details, which is very true about me. <laughs> I am not great at the nitty gritty details. I can be if I have to be, but that's not like necessarily where my strengths lie. However, I, I know for me, it's one of those things I can get people really excited about things. I can see problems that are going to arise before they actually do. Like I'm phenomenal at the strategy side of things. And I think one of the things that I'm seeing in the industry that's going on and it drives me crazy, <laughs> and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this live today, is because if you are not a true believer in your business and the first thing you think about every day when you get up is, I'm going to be able to, how can I make more money by doing less, then I'm going to suggest that you probably shouldn't be an entrepreneur. And I don't say that to be harsh, I'm just saying that to be real because like, the entrepreneur and the business owner has to be more committed to the end result and the goals and the impact that the business is going to make than anybody else in the company, right? Whether that person is an employee or a contractor or whoever they are. And if you are not the most committed and engaged and willing to like put your sleeves up and get help, right? Especially if your business hasn't made six figures yet, then how are you going to expect somebody who's a contractor to have that much belief in your business and carry that vis vision forward for you if you're not even that committed? And so you have to do the work and you have to be a believer and you have to like set an example as a leader for your people, right? Like, I have a master's degree in leadership. I often don't talk about my master's degree in leadership, and I probably should. And 
my master's degree in leadership has taught me that to get your followers to buy into what you're doing, you need to you need to help them see the outcome. They need to be ju- they need to be committed with you, right? And if you're not committed and you don't believe in what you're doing and you're always trying to find ways to shortcut, you know, going from zero to six figures or six figures to mid six figures or whatever that is, if you're always trying to take that shortcut, really, I don't think that you should try and be an entrepreneur because, <laughs> you know, there are weeks where it's insane and I work 60 hours and there's weeks where it's not and I work 30. But ultimately, the responsibility of everything falls on me. And so if I'm always the first person to be like, how can I shortcut, you know, doing my part of the work, then I'm not really setting a good example for my team either. So how am I going to get them to buy into a vision if I'm always like, what's the easiest way? And I'm not saying you have to take the hardest way either. (laughs) I'm simply contending that you do have to do some work. And so if you aren't willing to like roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty and do some work, then you know what? Just go find a regular job. (laughs) Don't go through all the problems of starting a business, running a business, not being successful at a business, et cetera, et cetera. And then I think the other thing that you have to think about is, you know, what is it that you are going to do to help you get to where you want to be? So you like you have to you have to A be a believer in number two, take the time to help you get to where you want to be. And that's not, um, that's not always easy, right? So it takes time. It takes strategy. It takes showing up consistently. Like, I can't tell you how many messages I've gotten from people who haven't necessarily even bought a single thing from me yet, who are like, James, I watched all your videos. They're awesome. And I love them. And they'll repeat back stuff to me from that video. And what I want you to know is like, I didn't, this isn't, it's a very intentional thing that you see me do showing up, giving this content, believing in the business, believing in my clients that I work with, believing in my team and taking the time to figure out a strategy that works for me. Like, please take, if you work with a coach or you've gone through a course or whatever, take the pieces that you like and make them your own. Do the work, figure out what's going to work for your audience, figure out who your ideal client is and spend the time because the faster you can get all of that stuff out of the way, the faster you're going to be able to get from where you are today to where you want to go. And I'm not saying it's magic. There's always going to be speed bumps along the way. But if you do the work, you believe in your biz and you take the time and you show up consistently, you will get to where you want to be today. And that's all I have to say. (laughs) Um, Just a short little rant for you guys today. If you haven't already and you're listening to this on the podcast, I would love for you to leave us a review on iTunes. Those five-star reviews mean so much to me, so I super appreciate it. And I hope you all have a successful day.